Praise the Lord. God Praise bless the Lord. you. God bless you. Another beautiful Sunday, another day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Are you rejoicing? Are you glad in it? Come yes. on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We serve a mighty, mighty good God. Glory Hallelujah. God. Yes. And we thank him for all that he is and all that he does. What a mighty God we serve. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Mm. I am Apostle Dr. Dawn Nickel Manning. I am Bishop Dennis Manning. And we are the pastors of Love of Jesus deliverance new hope hallelujah <laughs> and we give him praise honor and glory um because we can say that uh we are not physically today at our location but our location we are moving in we are getting everything situated and i'm just so excited to know that god has kept his promises why wouldn't he he is he is the great i am he's yes. not a man that he would lie but it's just a beautiful thing when you start to operate and move in the things that god has told you he's going to do and they and you can and you can behold it right with your own eyes and it just once again brings you into a greater appreciation of knowing that god is awesome that he is mighty and he is truthful he is divine he is sovereign and he is just simply a mighty good god hallelujah, hallelujah. we welcome you in this time and in this space to come in and join with us as we go before uh the the presence of god as we allow for ourselves to just hu just humbly submit ourselves, giving God reverence, honor, and glory. This is his day. This is the Lord's day. And we need to make sure that we set time aside to give him the honor and the glory that is due to him. Yes. So we thank God for you joining in. Why don't you be a social media evangelist and go ahead and click that like button and click that share button and give someone an opportunity to hear the word, the rhema word from on high, because we know that it's going to impact them. It's going to edify them. It's going to encourage them to keep on running on to see what the end is going to be. Bishop, let us begin in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and this hour to sup with you, to honor you, to praise you. Lord, we exalt your name today. You are worthy of the cause. You are worthy of the praise. You are worthy of the high cause. Lord, we just want to say thank you for early morning rising the blood yet running warm through our veins, the activities of our limb. Holy Ghost, have your way. Have your way Use us for your glory. Have Bring your us way. down into the storehouse. Bring us up into the Old and to the New Testament. Have your way have today. Your way, we Jesus. thank you for life, health, and strength. You, just to breathe your air. Just to see not just the S-U-N, but the S-O-N who died on the cross for our sins and our iniquities. We love you. We magnify you. We honor you. We praise you. Our Jehovah Jireh, our Jehovah Nisi, our Jehovah Rapha, our Jehovah Shalom. We honor you. We praise you. Have your way today. We love you and we magnify you. Let the church say amen, 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 amen. and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to say thank you to each and every one of you who uh, wish wishes this ministry well, who prays for us, encourages yes. us, encourage us to continue to do the bless assignment you, that God has given us that's to go here into all the world and minister the gospel that is to let others know who are lost who do not yet know who he is the great king of king and lord of lords to mm. give them an opportunity to live life abundantly because of our witness and because of us sharing the gospel we say thank you because that is that mission is so important as yes. long as we have breath in our bodies and those mm. of us who are believers we have to stay on course and mm. our mission has been set before us from our lord and savior jesus christ and we have to commit to making sure that we complete the task. We have to keep on telling about his goodness mm. and his mercies. Hallelujah. We got to keep on telling say people it, that it, Jesus still saves, delivers, and sets free. Yes, oh, yes, can. there. It is true about signs, wonders, and miracles to mm. behold. They are real. They are real. Yes, they are. Mm. And we have to let people know. So mm. we thank God for each and every one of you who assist in making that happen. Those of you who bless this ministry through tithes, through offering, through contributions and donations, we say thank you. Please thank know you. that you. they are tax deductible at the end of the year. Please make sure that you include that because that's, once again, a way of God returning it back to you because that's his covenant. His perpetual covenant lets us know that when we give, expect for it to come back. Press down, shaking together, rolling over, mm. and just making sure that we understand that God, he's going to do what he says he's going to do. And his word, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, he said, let me prove myself to you. When you make sure that the things that are needed for the storehouse are there, I will then open up the windows of heaven and pour you out of 
a blessing wherein you will not have enough room to receive. And I know for myself personally that that has been a living witness to my life. Every time I sow seed into the good ground of ministry to charity, God brings it back beyond what I can even think, imagine, or believe. Sometimes it's not always monetary, but it'll be uh, it'll be an open door. Hallelujah. Mm. Sometimes it'll be someone saying, hey, I have an idea or I have something that I want to help you with or here here's an appliance or here's a, here's a, 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 a piece of machinery that you can use this, that, and the other. God will just blow your mind on how... He could, he just stays committed to who he is. And that is being truthful. That's yes. his perpetual covenant. God mm. will bless those. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Who bless. Hallelujah. Yes. The things of God. When you take care of the things of God, he don't need us. No, he don't. Say but uh, being a part of this life, we got to see how things work together. For every action, there is a reaction. Mm. So when we act on God, his reaction is to act right back mm. on us. Glory be yeah, like to God. That. Hallelujah. Like so once again, thank you so much. Every person that gives to this ministry, I personally pray for you and I lift you up that God will anoint you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Whatever it is that you put your hand in mind to do, that he would anoint it and get the glory out of it yes. and it will flourish and it will do what it needs to do in the earth to be a blessing to you as well as to others. So let's continue to work together to get the mission done mm. and to make sure that we are continuing to give God the glory and all that we say and do. <laughs> Bishop, your commentary. Oh, my commentary. I'm so excited. Friday went to like a little couple's date, but I want to talk about this because I don't hear it too much. Proverbs 18 and 22 say, Whosoever findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtain favor with the Lord. You always, I hear people have saying, Oh, that thing get on my nerve. That thing's bothering me. That thing. But who findeth a wife findeth a good thing? Sex of God, it said, What does, what does a man that findeth a wife mean? This in Proverbs describes that God favor is in finding a good wife. She is to be treasured and received as a gift from God when a husband and wife view one another as a gift from God to receive and, and cherish and then begin to experience that oneness that he intended. One thing I love you know, I heard a preacher, a bishop say that uh, men been henpeck. I stopped by to tell you, make sure you've been pecked by the right hand. Okay. Help me, Holy Ghost. I heard a bishop say, men, we've been henpecked. But I stopped by to say, make sure you've been henpecked by the right by the right hand. I know I've been henpecked by the right hand, by the right um, hand. But God is good. I'm talking about finding for good thing. I ain't talking about just any old woman. Um, if you serve in God, Amos 3 and 3 said, two cannot walk together, not lest they agree. So when you find a wife, you want to find somebody that you and her is on the same page. Y'all walking together, praying together, reading your words, sticking together. You know, um, sometimes I, I believe men are still in the same um, 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 space that they're in because sometimes um, women can push us in areas. Uh, I, my, my wife have pushed me in certain areas that I believe that I didn't go in. Cause sometimes, man, we get insecure. Um, we get lazy sometime in certain areas and this, that, and other. please don't count it to my, uh, count this to God. What I'm saying to y'all, nobody don't get offended, but I'm just saying to you, when you find a wife, find out a good thing. Sometimes you gotta have that little push. Cause sometimes we don't want to go to the doctor. We don't want to go get checked. We don't want to, um, certain thing. We just, we just, uh, men, we can be stubborn sometimes. Let me say it like it is. We can be stubborn sometimes. When you find it for a wife, you find it a good thing that help you in certain areas, push you to certain things, this, that, and that. Because, you know, the enemy will try to stop you. As the man at the head of the head, try to uh, uh, sidetrack you, uh, make you think that this ain't going to happen for you. This thing, God ain't going to do it. Your faith can get tested anytime. The Bible says have faith of a mustard seed, saves to God. Let me tell you something. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. When you got a good wife and you got a, a good partner, a good help me next to you that's pushing you, you have found a good thing. I stopped by to tell the men, 
Make sure you know who you're marrying. When you find a good, the Bible said, a man that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. I know, I see, you got to know that you know. I know that I know that I found a good woman, a good, um, um, help me, a good woman in my life to, uh, uh, to push me, to help me along the way. Cause sometimes we don't know everything. We, sometimes we think we know. No, you don't. You don't know everything. You're going to need help along married couples. Even if you single, you married to God. You can't just do it by yourself. You got to call on God to help you, this, that, and the other. But I'm saying a man that find a wife, find a good thing. I don't hear too many people talk about them. Get preachers talk about certain things about marriage and walking together, being together, saying things together, agreeing together, this, that, that. Something I learned over the weekend, thanks for God. I, you, when you walk with your wife and you somewhere, this, that, another, learn to hold her hand. Hold her hand. You don't know what that can spike, what that can do to a woman. Just holding her hand. Everybody think everything else got to be uh, spicy and jumping off and chandelier and this, that, and other. Walk down the street. Walk in the park. Walk holding hand. Walk on the boardwalk when the weather night. Even when it's a little chilly, put on a sweatsuit. Go on the boardwalk. Walk, hold hand. This, that, and other. A man that find it for a wife, you find a good thing. God bless you. That's my commentary for today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for this day and this opportunity. But we thank you for allowing for us to come together in this special time and space as we honor you and we bless you. For we know, Father God, that you would not have anyone or anything before you. And so, Father, we come together today, those of us who are tuning in, to say we love you, we honor you, and we give you glory for being the great I am. Now, Father, we ask right now during this time and moment as the word comes forth that, Lord, you open up the understanding of those who have an ear to hear. Father God, I pray right now that you would just take away all distractions and, Lord, that you would just begin to speak to your people. Lord, you are the potter. I am but the clay. Give me your divine words to say and bless those, oh God, who are tuning in, Father God. Speak to their hearts. Oh God, transform and renew them by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you all had a wonderful week. And as we are going into a new week, I know that God is going to do great and mighty works in our lives because that's the God that we serve. I know that in all things that, that is said and done, when we acknowledge him in all of our ways, he will direct our path. So we just thank God because he is a God that is just simply awesome. He's just simply awesome. Sometimes you don't know how things are going to pan out. You don't know why things are going this way. But when you just trust in him, when you just lean on Jesus, when you just really rely on him, every time he sees you through, he will see you through. And the plan that he has for us is better than any plan that we can make for ourselves. So to God be all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Go with me to the book of Psalm chapter 73. Psalm chapter 73. And I am going to read verses 26 to 28. It says, my flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. God bless his already blessed word. You know, it's so important that we understand that this flesh will fail us. Sometimes our heart may be into something. Or sometimes we may be conditioned to a certain ideal or program or situation. And our heart can literally fail us when those things do not function the way that we thought they were going to function. Our flesh will even fail us when we think that we're doing right. And, you know, because sometimes we just get into a routine and a pattern of doing something. We just feel like, OK, this is right. And, and we start to get conditioned. And then what happens? Our very flesh starts to fail us. We start to break down. 
We start to become stressed. We we are stressed out. We have a lot of tension and anxiety. The flesh will literally fail us. But God, but God is our strength. Hallelujah. He is our, he is the strength of our heart and he is our portion forever. Let me tell you something. When you have a portion of God, that's all you need. You just need a portion. See, because the dynamics or the phenomena of just having a portion. What, what is a portion? A, por- a portion is considered a, a measurement that has been taken just for you. It could be it could be sized up in a in a standard unit of pounds or or, or liters, if you want to say, or if you want to use a measuring cup. But it's a portion. It's a set aside measure that is assigned to you or given to you for a purpose and a reason. So when God has given himself to us through his son, Jesus Christ, a portion See, Jesus came into this world to save us. He was our portion, not just for the time that he was on the earth, but he was our portion forever. Hallelujah. See, because God, there is no one before him. There's no one that's going to be after him in in the magnitude of his power and him being the great I am. There will never be one before him or after him. Never. He's just simply the great I am. So when he gives a portion of himself, which he did by sending his son, Jesus Christ, into the earth, that's really all we need because it will sustain us forever. See, with a portion, when someone gives you a portion, it's you have to understand that I got to use it. Somebody can give you a portion of oil so that you can be able to cook your food. But if you never get the things and the vegetables or maybe a piece of chicken or fish or whatever it is that you like to eat, wherein you can put that oil in a pan, it's not going to be useful because you don't have the understanding of how to use it. I'm going to even go some, I'm, I'm going to go even a little deeper. Uh, um, I'm thanking God for the opportunity to educate children and work with children. I think the greatest career that is on this earth is being a teacher. And I thank God that I am teaching seven and eighth grade science. And I, I, I am so appreciative of the fact that God has allowed me to inspire the next generation for as long as he's going to use me in that capacity. I give him honor for allowing me to operate and function in that way. So as we are going through the different things that we have to learn how to do, that we have what we call lesson plans. And these lesson plans, they are set up and they are, are arranged so that you can give your students a, you're supposed to set them and arrange them to give your students a high quality education. On top of that, what, of, of understanding what your pedagogy is, as an educator, you've been trained, you've been certified, you had to go to school, you had to do all of those things in order to even have be allowed to be in the presence of your students to teach them and to equip them with knowledge. So on top of knowing how to set up your uh, your pedagogy and to set up lesson plans on what you're going to execute and, and, and teach, we have what we call technology. Okay. And then this technology, we have a new system in the district that I'm working in and it's called VALS. And it's a, uh, it's a system of technology that is, uh, is sponsored by or sponsored through uh, Verizon. And they have all of these different types of uh, webinars and different types of tools, training mechanisms to help the educator to be even more equipped beyond what they already have so that they can ensure that the students are receiving the best quality education. Now, this is the thing how I'm tying it in. Now, we have all of these resources and I was going over the, I was look, I was blown away. I said, my goodness, this is amazing because I'm, I, I, I'm not only am I an educator, but I'm a parent and I have the my son uh, coming up and I'm saying, Lord, I just want my son to be able to be with a teacher or or teachers that are going to make sure that they open up the resources that have been given to them to ensure that the children that they are teaching receive the best quality education. See, all of these resources, they have been set before us. But if we never open up the device and read it, if we never look at those webinars and take notes, if we never go back and we look for the different programs on how they function and operate, if we never take the time to look at that information, as great as it may be, 
we stunt our growth as an educator and we then stunt others because the ones who were supposed to be educating, we are not allocating those resources and practices to give them the best. Are y'all getting this? Come on now. Come on, connect with me in the spirit. Come on, flow with me in the spirit. I'm telling you this right now. Just like these systems have been given to educators so that they can execute the best education for those who are there going to teach and train, God has done the same thing through Jesus Christ. He has given his son so that we can have the best resource to rely on, the best resource when we open up that word to read it so that it can go into our hearts, so it can help us and it can sustain our mentality and our thinking so that we can execute the best by living life abundantly. Then not only do we help ourselves, what do we do? We help others along the way. The resources that God has given to us, we have to apply them, the portion. See, God has given us the portion. If you don't use the portion that he has given you, it will become obsolete in your livelihood. And, and by the time, when you recognize that, wait a minute, but I have my portion here all the time. The only thing I had to do was go ahead and just open it up. The only thing I had to do was grab the oil and pour the oil in my pot so I can cook my vegetable. I, I didn't even notice we gave it such a great flavor. You got to do the work. You have to apply yourself. You, have, you can't just sit there because the portion has been given to you. Now, what you going to do with it? God has given us weapons of warfare that are not carnal, but they are for the pulling down of strongholds. He has given us the armor of God, wherein we can stand against the wiles of the enemy. Jesus taught the disciples how to pray, and that prayer is still existing today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. God is still operating and moving. He has given us the portion that we need, but we must apply it. When we apply it, I'm telling you something. He will give you joy, unspeakable joy, peace that surpasses all understanding, strength and tenacity where you can run through a troop and jump over walls. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This thing is real. It's real. But you have to understand that he's our source. He's our strength. He is our portion forever. He's given us what we need. We have to trust him. We have to rely on him. We have to move according to his will and purpose for our lives. Some of us are walking in our own way and we're not, and we're not getting to where we, we need to be. We're not feeling fulfilled the way God don't want you walking around not feeling. Let me tell you something. God wants to fill you up. There, there should not be that feeling of void in your spirit. You should be fulfilled when you are walking in the things of godliness. It's a shame. I'm pulling in current events. It's a shame. It's a it's a pure shame what we're seeing, what's going on with um, these entertainers. Uh, 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 the entertainer uh, uh, has, has so many names, uh, Diddy, uh, Sean Combs or whatever, being locked up. And then all of these other celebrities that are involved. You know why that happened? They had all the money, riches, fame. They had all of that. Uh, yachts and, and, and traveling with their private islands and celebrating and giving people Rolexes for gifts. And I mean, they had it all. But what does the word say? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and then lose his only soul? See what the enemy does. He, he, tangle, he gets us entangled and he will get us caught up in our pride and in our own way. Doing things our own way rather than submitting our hearts, our minds, and our spirit to the most high God and saying, Lord, lead me. The Lord didn't lead nobody to have no uh, 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 parties where you're, where, where you're defiling one another, where, where you are taking the innocence from the young. That's not of God because anybody that's praying the Holy Ghost, no, you don't do that. You don't do that. Holiness is still right. I don't care what nobody said. Holiness is still right. And for those of us who know, you know why these things are happening? I don't care what nobody, uh, what's his name? Sean Combs. He, know who, he knows who God is. Yeah, trust and believe. He knows. 
He knows. All of those entertainers, they know who God is. Yes, they do. But they gave themselves over to their own way by the leading of demonic influence. And the devil enticed them. They fell into the temptation. And now look what's happening. People are not, they, those celebrities are now afraid. Are they going to see me on these tapes? Or am I, oh, is my name going to be mentioned? Oh, I'm going to be so bad. And all of this nonsense is coming out. Why? Because they hardened their hearts against the Most High God. Let me tell you, whatever things that you get in life, whatever you are blessed with, cars, homes, businesses, uh, buildings, whatever it is, you better stay humble before the Lord. Don't let pride puff you up to think that now you're invincible. No, 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 no. We are the creation of God. And the creation of God is never superior than the creator. And we got to always be reminded of that. And we got to submit our ways unto the Lord. Because if we don't, when you have pride, pride cometh before fall. And now we have all of these celebrities. And, 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 and I'm an empath. I feel. I don't like seeing people get in trouble. I don't like people falling. If I could help, it, it, I'm going to help. Because I'm looking at these, they're, they're, these black entertainers who hit societal heights, privilege, opportunities that are beyond what the average African-American citizen can accomplish. They went above and beyond and they allowed for the enemy to snare them up and cause for them to fall. Let me tell you something. The devil don't care who you are. He don't care about your talents, your skills, and your abilities. You better know who God is and you better keep him as your portion. And you better utilize what he has given you to do to keep you from falling. It's through him. He's the one that will keep us from falling. Because what did we read here in verse 26 of Psalm 73? My flesh and my heart faileth. See, but it's through God. It's through God. But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. If you don't have God as the center, if you don't have God as your focus, you're going to fail. You're going to fall. You're going to give into those temptations and devices of the enemy. And you know what the enemy does when he gets you caught up and when he gets the spot out, the spotlight out on you to put you in a place of shame, he backs up. He backs up. Oh, well. You know why? Because the enemy hates us. He hates human beings because he does not have the opportunity that we have. And that is to repent and get it right with God. He does not have that opportunity. And so what does he do? He tries to mess us up. All of the things that are happening in, in our world, the enemy is trying to destroy humankind. And for those of us who see what's going on in the spiritual realm, it behooves us to pray like never before. It behooves us to go into fasting like never before. It behooves us to get in that word and hide that word in our heart like never before. We are living in the end times. Yes, we are. Historically, historically look as what happened in the earth. All of the milestones and the historical catastrophes and all of these pivotal things happen every 2,000 years. We got to pay attention to the times. Now, when we say, is it the end of the world? No, no one knows when the end of the world is going to be except the great I am. But the end of times, yes, we can see that we are living in those end times because of the things that are occurring in the world. It behooves us to pray. It behooves us to know who our portion is and allow for God to operate in our lives accordingly. But it is good for me to draw near God, draw near him, draw nigh unto him, and he will draw nigh unto you. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. When you walk in the vein that God declares for you to walk in, you will forever declare all his works. You don't have to worry about looking over your shoulder wearing, oh, what I did and what I was involved in wasn't right. Because when he is your portion, 
He's going to lead and guide you through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to lead you to the truth. The Holy Spirit is not going to lead you to a place where and you are going to fall in, in, in condemnation. Where you're going to be put in a place where unrighteous acts are now going to be looked upon in your life and you will be judged. The Holy Spirit doesn't lead us in that way. No, he does not. So it's important once again to draw, draw close to God. And these times that we are living in, you got to draw close to him like you've never done before. Some, some things are happening in, in the lives of believers and they're saying, why is this happening? Why was this taken away? Why was I moved here? Why? Because God wants you to draw nigh to him. Don't think of it as a punishment. Don't think of it as, oh, something is being taken away. God wants you. He wants your attention and he's telling you, pay, please, whatever you do, do not shun away from it. Do not shut down. Know that God is calling you in. He wants, he wants you to draw nigh to him. He wants you to draw close to him. And it's so important that when that invitation is given to you, that you accept it. Accept that invitation and do what God is calling you to do. Because in your obedience, you are going to be blessed and you are going to be able to declare all his works. Glory to God. Lord, we thank and praise you for your divine word. We thank you for being the great God that you are. We thank you for the invitation on how you draw us in to draw nigh to you. We say thank you. And Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would open up the understanding of those who have an ear to hear to receive that invitation, oh God, with seriousness and sincerity, that they will, Father God, get into a place of prayer, fasting and supplication, oh God, and studying your word so that your spirit can speak to them, give them personal divine revelation on what they need to do and how they need to get things done. Lord, in this season and this time, I pray that that you will take the scales off of your children's eyes, wherein they will not fall into the enemy's devices of just getting into the mundane routine of things, but rather, Father God, give them, oh God, insight and wisdom from on high, wherein they will be able to see, Father God, that the enemy is trying to pull them. They're, the enemy's trying to sift them as wheat, but Father, I thank you because you gave us your son, Jesus Christ, and the only thing we have to do is to call upon his name, and Lord, I pray that you would just draw them them into a better understanding of what it means, oh God, as you being their portion. Oh God, you are all that we need. And Father God, when we allow for our portion, for us to use it, Father God, there's nothing that you will withhold from us. So give us the understanding, oh God, on how to operate in our portion that you have given us in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray for wisdom. I pray for the spirit of discernment to touch your people, Father God. I pray right now that you would bind and rebuke every device and sabotage of the enemy where that temptation is trying to throttle itself in front of your children. Father God, I pray that you give them resisting power for your word lets us know that if we resist the devil, he will flee. So Father, I pray for resisting power that they not fall short of the glory, but they will, God, they will hold up, oh God, the bloodstained banner, that they will stay on course because they are allowing for you to be the guide unto their feet and the light unto their path. Father God, cover them with the blood. Strengthen them, oh God. Protect them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, as we touch and agree with this prayer, let our words hit the throne. We bind up hindering forces in the name of Jesus. We bind up monitoring spirits, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I pray right now that you allow for the light, oh God, of, that you have given us to shine for, that it will burn and it will singe these demonic things and influences that are around us to try to keep us from going forward in the things that you have called us to do. We speak the blood of Jesus to prevail over our lives, to prevail over our children, to prevail over those who are connected to us, to prevail over our businesses, to prevail over our careers, oh God, to prevail over, prevail over our ministries in the name of Jesus, prevail over our communities and our home. Father, we look to you because you are our portion and we ask, Father, that you move in our lives. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Father, for when we trust and believe in you, your word lets us know that you will not withhold any good thing from those of us who trust and believe in you. We thank you, praise you, and give you honor. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, thank you, Lord, for being my portion. Hallelujah. The Lord is my portion and he's all that I ever need. Glory to his wonderful name. Hallelujah. Start moving and operating in what God has called you to do. Start moving and operating in your time of prayer. If you've only been doing 10 minutes of prayer, increase it to another 10. Do 20 minutes of prayer. If you've only been fasting, you say, I'm going to consecrate for half a day. Come on, push yourself for a whole day. Come on, push yourself. If you say, oh, I'm just going to read a verse. Come on, read the whole chapter of the word. Let God do what he needs to do in your life because he is your portion. Hallelujah. And he wants to do great and mighty things through you. He wants to use your life for his glory. Hallelujah. So that you can declare his words. Come on, walk with it. Come on, talk with him. Draw close, draw nigh unto him and he will draw nigh unto you. Don't you give up? Don't you give in. Don't you let go of God's unchanging hand. Know and trust that the best is yet to come. And the great thing, the great thing that you have been believing upon and expecting God to do, it will come to pass. We leave you with this. I am blessed. And I cannot be cursed. Because Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. God, God bless, bless you. you. God bless you. Love, you. love you. Come on, just praise the Lord. As you go off this broadcast, yeah. put your hands together and say, thank you, Lord, for being my portion. Yeah. Hallelujah. God bless you. We love you.